In this video, I will be using lemongrass to make the smell of roses. Specifically, I will extract citral from lemongrass, which has a strong lemon smell, and turn it into ionone, which smells like roses. To do this, I will first take lemongrass and extract its essential oil through steam distillation. Then on this essential oil, I can perform a fractional vacuum distillation to separate out the citral. This citral can then be chemically modified to form pseudo-ionone, which in turn can be transformed into ionone with an acid, and we should then have our rose fragrance. But before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, The Column. The Column is a free email newsletter about the chemical industry on a global scale. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to check out the link in the description at the end of the video. So to get started, I bought dry lemongrass powder online, so the volume of lemongrass wouldn't be too much. But the same process can also be done on dried or undried lemongrass. So I set up a heating mantle and then place in a large flask. I then add in 200 ml of water, put on a funnel and add in 175 grams of lemongrass powder. I then start building a simple steam distillation setup. I add a Kleisen adapter on top. On the left I add an adapter with a dropping funnel that contains water. And on the right I simply add a stopper. Then I attach a condenser that leads into a beaker. Now I can start the steam distillation. So to start it off, I add in water from the dropping funnel and heat the flask so that the water begins to boil. After a while the mixture started to boil and I kept adding water until I collected about 1 liter of distillate. Now, this distillate should contain some essential oil. Since it is quite a large volume, it won't separate out easily. So to get it out, I can extract it with some hexane. I add the hexane to the distillate and shake it around. And we can see some of the cloudiness has moved into the hexane. Now I do the same to the whole distillate. And in the end, I am left with a bunch of hexane that should contain the lemongrass oil. To remove any remaining water that is inside of the hexane, I add in some sodium sulfate to dry it. And mix it around a bit and let it sit for a while and then filter it through some cotton to leave behind the salt. Now that everything has filtered through, I set it up for a simple distillation to boil off all of the hexane. And afterward, I am left with only a few milliliters of oil, which I put into a vial. Now, since you can only get so little oil from that much lemongrass at work, for the next part I will simply add in some commercial lemongrass oil. So to my own extracted oil, I add in a total of 3 vials of commercial lemongrass oil, which adds up to 90 ml. Now the next step is to separate out the citral from the oil. To do that, I set it up for a vacuum fractional distillation. So this is the whole setup, and I pull a vacuum to about 3 to 4 millibars. Then I start heating, and the first bits of low boiling point components start coming over. I collect this first fraction up to about 72 C. I then swap the receiving flask to collect the second fraction, boiling between 72 and 75 C. This fraction should contain the citral, which is also the largest component of the oil. When the temperature started reaching past that, I swapped out the receiving flask again and some more higher boiling point components started coming over. When nothing more came over, all that was left in the flask was some red oil. And in the end, I am left with three fractions of which fraction 2 should contain mostly citral. The weight of the second fraction was 56.6 gram, which is a yield of about 61%. Now the next step is chemical modification. But before that, I will prepare some solutions. So I set up a beaker with a stir bar and add in 55 ml of absolute ethanol. Then I add in 2.54 grams of sodium metal. This will react with the ethanol and make a solution of sodium ethoxide. When everything had reacted, I start preparing another solution. So I set up a new beaker, add in a stir bar, and add in 55 ml of water. Then I add in 9.1 grams of tartaric acid. I allow everything to dissolve and then take it off. Now that this is prepared, we can start the reaction. So I set up a large flask where I put in all of the citral and an ice salt water bath. I add in the stir bar and 280 ml of dry acetone. Then I attach a dropping funnel and a thermometer. And to the dropping funnel, I add in the sodium ethoxide solution that I prepared before. Now I wait for the internal temperature to reach minus 5 C and then slowly drip in the sodium ethoxide solution. When adding the sodium ethoxide, the solution quickly discolors. It is important to keep the temperature around minus 5 C or below to reduce any side reactions or polymerization. What is happening is a base catalyzed aldol condensation between citral and acetone, followed by dehydration of the aldol product into pseudo ionone. When all of the sodium ethoxide solution had been added, I left it to stir for a few more minutes. 
and after that I added the previously prepared tartaric acid solution to the mixture. This will destroy any remaining base, and immediately a white precipitate forms, and the solution quickly turns orange. After this, I remove the ice bath and set up a heating mantle instead. Now the next step is to quickly steam distill the mixture to remove excess acetone, while keeping water present for the tartaric acid and salts to dissolve in, and to knock out the pseudo -ionone. So to the right neck, I attach a distillation setup, and to the dropping funnel I add in some water. I start heating the mixture to a boil and drop in some water. When it starts to boil and more water is added, the precipitate dissolves, and the cloudiness disappears. I kept distilling until about 250 ml of distillate had come over, and after that we can see that there are two layers inside of the distilling flask. So I take it off heat and stop stirring to allow the layers to separate. On top is the pseudo ionone layer, and on the bottom the water layer. Now to be able to move on with the next step, the mixture should be cooled down, so I put it into an ice bath, start stirring, and wait till it reaches 15 C. I took it out of the ice bath and poured all of it into a separatory funnel, to separate the layers. Then I pour the water layer back into the separatory funnel and add in some ether to extract any remaining pseudo ionone. After shaking it around, we can see the yellow color has moved into the ether layer. So I separate the layers again and repeat the process with some fresh ether. I then combine the ether extracts with the pseudo ionone layer and added in some sodium sulfate to dry it. After that, I filter it all through some cotton directly into a flask. When that is done, I set it up for a distillation to boil off all of the ether. Then I swapped the setup for a vacuum fractional distillation setup and collected the first fraction, which is likely some remaining solvent, unreacted citral, and side products. After that, the pseudo ionone started coming over, between 100 and 110 C. After this, no more came over, and in the distilling flask some orange oil remains. In the end, I am left with 41.67 grams of pseudo ionone which is a yield of 58.3% if we assume 100% purity. Now the next step is to make the ionone, which is the final product. So I set up a flask in an ice bath and drop in a stir bar. I then add in 145 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid and 60 grams of glacial acetic acid. Then I attach a dropping funnel and a thermometer adapter and wait for the mixture to cool down to 10 C. While waiting, I add in all of the pseudo ionone from before to the dropping funnel. And when the temperature has reached 10 C, I slowly drop in the pseudo ionone and maintain the temperature between 10 and 15 C. While adding the pseudo ionone, the mixture turns dark. What is happening is an acid catalyzed cyclization, where the pseudo ionone can take up two hydrogen atoms to form either alpha or beta ionone. The product that is favored depends on the acid that is used. In this case, the acid mixture prioritizes the formation of beta ionone. After everything had been added, I take away the ice bath and let it stir for another 15 minutes. When that is done, I set up another ice bath that contains 850 grams of ice water and a stir bar. I then add in 200 ml of ether on top. Then to this bath, I add in all of the acid ionone mixture while stirring. The mixture quickly mimics iced coffee and I wash the flask with some more ether. Then I set up a large beaker with a funnel and transferred all of the contents into it. Then I moved it in parts to the separatory funnel and separated the water and the ether layer. Then I extracted the water layer with ether, washed the ether layer with some water to wash out the bulk of the acid, and then I neutralized the ether layer with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. And finally I washed it with some brine. After that, I put all of the ether layer into a beaker and added some sodium sulfate to dry it. Then I filtered it all through some cotton into a large flask and set it up for a regular distillation to boil off all of the ether. When all of the ether had come over, some dark oil is left behind. Then I swap the setup for a vacuum fractional distillation and wrap it in some aluminum foil to insulate it. Then between 102 and 108 C, I collect the fraction containing the ionone. When no more came over, we have some yellow oil in the receiving flask. And all that is left in the distilling flask is some dark oil that quickly oxidizes in air. So in the end, I am left with 21.92 grams of ionone, and we have some rose fragrance. So that was it, thank you for watching, and a special thanks to all my patrons. If you'd also like to support me in making content, make sure to subscribe and head over to patreon.com slash See ya!